So last time we talked, it was about a year ago, um, we talked about the Chinese digital yuan and basically the threat that poses. You described it as an existential threat. It's basically the social credit system on steroids, you know, impacting many other countries. So now with this Russia-Ukraine war happening and the Chinese you know, posture on that, we see the digital yuan kind of accelerating in use. I don't know if it's accelerating a lot or a bit, but why don't you tell us? Yeah, sure. So, you know, uh, with the advent of the Olympics in Beijing, uh, we call them the genocide games uh, happening earlier this year. Uh, one of the things that the, that the Chinese uh, Communist Party did was force the participants to enroll and use, download the, the e Yuan app, uh, and force them to use it as their payment system while in Beijing. Uh, that, of course, begins the forcible use uh, of the e Yuan. And what I mean by that is China's rollout will be they can, they can definitely force it on their own population, but their goal in this global rollout of the e one is, is, uh, is multi-pronged. Uh, the first prong is uh, they really want to want to try to lessen their dependence on the U.S. dollar, right? About 87% of global transactions that China settles are settled in dollars, right? They're desperately short energy. They're desperately short food. They're desperately short basic materials. They have to go buy these things every day around the world, and no one trusts their currency, and they still have a closed capital account. And so what do they have to do? They have to use their dollars. Uh, to do so. So what they're trying to do, number one, is lessen the reliance on dollars. And maybe even closer to number one, 1A, one uh, is they are trying to basically export the Chinese tech stack into everyone in the developed West and East uh, all over the world. And, and what that means is this isn't a simple digital payment app. This is an app that tracks where you are, what your name is, what your social security number is, what all of your identifiers are, it has geo, geo locating, locating, location ability, uh, and it also gives a direct line from the Chinese government to an individual outside of the purview of law enforcement, outside of the, the, uh, the umbrella or over, oversight of um, uh, banking regulators. Imagine if the Chinese government had access to every Tom, Dick, and Harry in America, uh, and in Europe, and in Canada, and they had the ability to know where, what your bank account is, what it looks like, what your income is, and if you're in financial difficulty. Imagine if they could cross-run an algorithm that says, let's look for U.S. government employees uh, that have Tinder, that are short on cash, and maybe they're married, and we can corrupt them immediately, right? Um, it gives them the, the ramp to corrupt anyone and everyone around the world that's corruptible, which is a real national security problem. So it's a way they can export digital authoritarianism. It's a way they can export their coercion, their bribery, and everything they do in the Belt and Road countries around the world. It is, I think, the single largest threat to the West in the last 50 years. And it's being overshadowed by the Russian invasion of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many articles have you seen on the E1 in the last three months? Almost none, right? There are, there are a few. Uh, but it is not top of mind, and it needs to be top of mind. We live in an era of censorship and disinformation, and it can be really hard to know what's true and what's false in this information climate. To get honest information and insights you can trust, join us on Epoch TV. You can sign up for your 14-day free trial at ept.ms slash free trial yan. That's ept.ms slash free trial J-A-N. Well, and so arguably, right, basically Russia with the cent Russian central bank being sanctioned, right, Russia has been looking for other ways of doing payments. I think Hungary has said they're, they're okay, we'll use the ruble to pay for, for energy. Um, but, and the Chinese regime is al aligning with Russia. I mean, f we we're talking about the genocide games, right? They signed a very tight agreement. Maybe I know, I know this is something that you're, you know, very up on. Maybe you can kind of tell us about that right now. Yeah, I mean, it, I think the world needs to go back and reread the February 4th joint communique between Xi and Putin. They issued a public press release, and uh, it goes line by line on what their, uh, their new strategic partnership is going to look like, that no, no areas of strategic cooperation are, quote, off limits, which of course means hypersonics, nuclear, all of the good and bad things that, that they could possibly be uh, working together on. In there, uh, Putin and Russia basically endorse 
the concept of the reunification of, of the Taiwanese separatists, uh, and then part and parcel the, the, uh, the Chinese uh, endorse Russia's uh, realignment of Mother Russia and, they, and basically usurping the Ukraine again. It, they say it. They come out and tell you who they are, what they're going to do, and that they're, for, they're, they're basically forming the new axis of authoritarians between China, Russia, and the rest of the bad guys around the world. And I think what this war is doing is forcing that bifurcation of the world uh, into the, the rules-based, human rights-based developed West and the axis of authoritarians. And I think that will continue to move in those directions very quickly over the coming years. One of the big challenges is, and I, ha I have to mention this, is that the, you know, the rules-based order itself is suffering a bit. Mm. And you have a lot of people you know, sort of wondering, hey, wow, we're, it's like we're almost, we're, we have to pick between uh, two not so great situations. What are your thoughts on that quickly? You know, I know there's been a huge uh, wedge or, or, or set of uh, divisive uh, rhetoric in the U.S. Um, really that Trump accelerated uh, with his antics. Uh, many of the things Trump did with foreign policy were right on spot, but it, they were overshadowed, overshadowed by him being a little bit of a, a buffoon. Uh, in, in kind of his personal life and, in, and even in, in, in how he interacts with the rest of the world. Uh, that split um, in, in the U, let's just focus on U.S. politics. We can go to Canada, we can go to Europe, we can go wherever you want to go. But in the U.S., that divide's never been wider. The radicals have pushed both parties so far on both sides that I actually feel like they're coming back a little bit, even though they're trying to double down in rhetoric, but they're realizing that, that this experimentation on the radical left and radical right has gone too far. And I think when you look at the US throughout history, um, whenever we are involved in a, in a great conflict or have a really large problem, we tend to come together pretty quickly. Uh, and there are some things that the administration comes together on. Think about the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act passed almost unanimously with one idiot voting against it. So where do you think Republicans and Democrats agree? They agree on democracy. They agree on rule of law. They agree on uh, uh, punishing those that, that basically tear up international agreements. And so I'm, I realize that there is this division. And you, you and I both know on social media who is sowing this division. It's China and Russia with their propaganda wars every single day putting thousands and millions of bots on Twitter and Facebook, and they're attacking. Um, uh, literally daily. And, and you can see their alter egos and the fact that they're all pseudonyms and you can see what they do. So I think, look, in the grand scheme of things, I think the West will come together like you saw NATO immediately come together. I don't think Putin uh, bet on NATO uh, not being divided on this. Now, clearly, Germany has some issues that it needs to deal with uh, to really feel like NATO is all uh, completely put together. But I think we're going to see the West uh, really come together uh, as we move forward. And, you know, uh, I think the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine is going to get worse before it gets better.